Oh, hello there. Kind of caught me off guard. Welcome to a, another exciting episode of Knife Chats with Tobias. Full disclosure here. Uh, I really like the Case Junior Scout. I mean, I really like it. I, I've got three of them. I wish I had more. Um, I really wish I had a second one in the uh, Amber Peach Seed Jig or the, um, or the Stag. Uh, so that I'd have one that I could actually use and abuse quite a bit. As it is, I occasionally will carry the uh, the amber jigged, uh, the peach seed here, uh, because that is probably the least valuable of the three that I have. Um, but I don't want to use it heavily because I don't want to ruin it because they're just so hard to get. Um, but that's really not what this video is about. Really, this video was inspired because I saw a recent video uh, from Hobie on YouTube in which he talked about this knife here, the uh, Prepared for Life uh, Boy Scout Junior Scout knife um, that Case made. His was from 2010. Mine here is from 2012. I'll be talking about that in a little bit as well. But really... I saw that video and it's like, aha, now I have an excuse to make this video. Now, if you're not familiar with Hobie on YouTube, well, if you like uh, Scout Knives, you should uh, get familiar with Hobie on YouTube, especially if you like the early Scout Knives, uh, because he has a, a tremendous collection of early Scout Knives, uh, pr primarily um, official Boy Scout knives from pre-World War II period. Um, just a phenomenal collection, and he likes to show them off. Also, if you're a person who likes Swiss Army knives and you're not familiar with Hobie on YouTube, you really need to get familiar with him real quickly because uh, he has um, just a great selection of Swiss Army knives, and he is one of the most knowledgeable people I know on um, on YouTube when it comes to Swiss Army knives. Um, if you got a question about Swiss Army knives, he's the guy you should be asking. And the same goes for uh, pre-World War II Boy Scout knives. He knows a lot more about pre-World War II Boy Scout knives than most other people uh, I know. And he also has quite a few resources that he uses to uh, make sure his information is up to date and correct. So. Uh, if you haven't checked out Hobie on YouTube and you're in the Scout Knives or Swiss Army Knives, run over there and check him out right after this video. I'll put a link uh, below so you can find him easily. Okay, with that said, why am I breaking out my Case Junior Scouts again? Well, primarily because I just wanted to look at them and also to answer a couple questions that came up uh, from Hobie on YouTube. Uh, one of those questions being, uh, well, how long were these knives made? And then the other one uh, was, uh, how many different styles of these knives are there? And I will tell you now, I do not have exact dates for when these knives were made. I have a rough estimate, a pretty good guess. And I also do not know every uh, pattern that was made, as in every type of uh, handle material that was used on these knives. But I have uh, at least identified eight different uh, handle materials that were used on these knives. And that's really what I'm going to talk about. Uh, but first, uh, I want to uh, also say in agreement with Hobie on YouTube, that there is definitely a difference between this knife and an official Boy Scout knife. Now, this is one of the last USA-made official Boy Scout knives. This is an officially licensed product of the Boy Scouts of America. And um, what is the difference between an official Boy Scout knife and an officially and an officially licensed product. Um, and uh, I agree with uh, Hobie. There is definitely a distinction there, and it is a distinction that should be made. Now, as I mentioned, this is one of the last USA-made official knife of the Boy Scouts of America. This is one of their uh, official 
camp knives. And what makes this an official Boy Scout knife is right there. It'll say Official Knife Boy Scouts of America. And when you're collecting uh, Boy Scout knives, that's a big deal. If it says Official Knife Boy Scouts of America with the blade edge. And then it should also have the, uh, the shield there. And as you can see, this one here was made by Bear MGC. They were the last American producer of official Boy Scout knives. Um, Colonial might have also been making them around the same time as Bear MGC or Bear and Son, but I believe Colonial only made the Cub Scout knives. I do not know for sure. Um, but after this official knife, Boy Scouts of America, um, they moved to China, and this is one of the first uh, official knife Boy Scouts of America made in China. Notice you've got the uh, Boy Scout emblem there, and again, official knife Boy Scouts of America, in this case, stainless China. They will usually refer to these as a scout shop knife. Uh, instead of by the uh, company that makes it, they'll just call it a scout shop knife. In any case, or a scout store knife, one of those two. But in any case, those are official knives, Boy Scouts of America. This knife does not have the official knife uh, blade edge going on. Instead, you just see it says Boy Scouts of America. And then it does have the little fur de lis on there. Uh, and it does look very similar, but instead of having a round shield, it's oval. That's not a big deal. But the big difference is this one does not say official knife. And that's why, um, as you can see from the box, officially licensed Boy Scouts of America pocket cutlery. So this one is an officially licensed product as opposed to an official knife. And then you see this on this knife. I showed this recently also. This is my Buzzsaw Trapper. And you see it just says 100th Anniversary Boy Scouts of America. Again, this is an officially licensed knife for the Boy Scouts of America. Now for the average knife collector, that might not be a big deal. But when it comes to uh, people who are serious about Boy Scouts of America memorabilia and Boy Scouts of America knives, then it becomes a distinction that becomes somewhat important. And it's something that um, if you're a seller on eBay or if you're a person who is a uh, collecting these knives or if you're a person who's selling these knives at a swap meet or something it becomes a big deal and it will help you out a lot if uh if you know the differences and the distinctions between a officially licensed product an official knife of the boy scouts of america and then a knife such as this which says scout on it but is not an officially licensed product or um, an official knife of the Boy Scouts of America. It is just a, uh, a camp knife or a scout knife, if you want to call it that, that happens to say scout on it, but it is not an officially licensed product, nor is it an official knife of the Boy Scouts of America. Um, Maybe I've uh, beaten a dead horse here, but I think it is a distinction that uh, collectors uh, should be aware of. Uh, is it a big deal for most people? Probably not. Might not be a big deal for a lot of people on this channel who are watching this uh, video right now. But as a person who collects Boy Scout mem memorabilia, especially Cub Scout knives, there is definitely a difference between a knife that just says Cub Scout on it and a knife that is an official knife of the Cub Scouts of America. Now, Hobie on YouTube had uh, two questions about two of the tools on this knife, um, and the first one being the uh, can opener. Because of how slim it was, he was wondering if it was actually an effective can opener. And I actually used this can opener in my video where I was comparing this knife to the uh, the official knife of the Cub Scouts, um, which is basically this knife, 
Well, this is the 75th anniversary one. And I was talking about all the differences between these two and the fact that, well, the official Cub Scout knife does not have a can opener. But the um, Boy Scout knives do. And I actually showed uh, this case can opener and I compared it to the other case can opener. And if you notice the distance from the little hook there to the cutting edge on this knife, or on the, the cutting edge on the, um, on the can opener, is about the same distance. And I actually used this on a can and showed that it worked actually quite well as a can opener. It performed uh, remarkably well. Um, as good as these can openers, matter of fact. So the can opener was not an issue. And to tell you the truth, the cap lifter over here, even though that looks kind of small compared to the cap lifter you have on your official Cub Scout knife, if you notice, the mouth of the two is about the same. The distance in there, it's just got a lot less meat going on. And because of the shape of this cap lifter, you can actually get it onto a, uh, uh, a bottle cap with no problem at all and actually open up a bottle. And I'll show that right now. Also notice the screwdriver tip is about the same size, but obviously much shorter. But let's take a look at how well that cap lifter opens a bottle. So you basically take your beer bottle, Take your cap lifter, align it with one of the uh, points on the uh, cap, and just lift straight up. Works great. There's not an actual problem with this cap lifter at all. It looks small, but as you can tell from like the uh, um, 58 millimeter uh, Rambler, it isn't the size of the cap lifter that matters. It's really the shape of the cap lifter and if it can get underneath one of those points on the crown or not. And this one works just perfect. So as you can see, the uh, cap lifter worked quite well. Uh, there really is no problem with that. And uh, the other two tools you have on here are obviously a very slim spear blade, uh, which some people complain about, but the uh, cutting edge on that, oops, is about the same as what you have on your official Cub Scout knife. It's a little shorter, but not too bad. And when you consider the, um, well, actually it's about, what, quarter inch shorter or so compared to an official Cub Scout knife, and it obviously does not have the belly. Uh, but then this is a much slimmer knife and it fits in the pocket quite well. And then you do have the punch over here on the other side. And it is a nice pointy uh, punch. And if you notice, it does have a nice belly going on there. While this side is flat, this side is nicely rounded. So you've got a lot of um, meat to the blade uh, and uh, a well-supported point going there. You also notice the little dug out there so you can get your thumb in there. So all in all, these are really well-made knives. Some of the best made uh, case knives I've ever seen. Um, I actually saw one person saying that they thought that these knives were made by Queen for case. Other people have disputed that. I do actually think that these were made by case for case. I don't think they were made by Queen. Uh, but uh, a few people have suggested that. 
uh, in any case, you can see the bone on this one, and they do a fabulous job with the peach seed bone. And this was the, uh, I believe this was a navy blue that they used for the uh, Boy Scout one. They also had one in a, uh, I believe an antique bone, I think it was called. And finally, you also have uh, my stag one here. And this is genuine stag, India sandbar stag. The sides don't match perfectly, but it's a pretty darn good close match as far as I'm concerned. And um, blades, same blades, same quality all around. Everything is nice and tight. There is no wobbling going on. And you can just look at the finish on the back of these knives. It's just a fabulous finish going on with all of them. Just beautiful the way everything goes in together. So really terrific knives. And then the other knives, these were the on the 090R frame. The R standing for the fact that it has a bail. And as you can tell, these bells are actually removable. They're, all you need to do is bend them out and pop them off. So if you did not like the bell, you could have popped them off. Um, I like bells, so I didn't remove them. Um, the other knives, these these are my three are, are my two Stockmans that I have. This is on the uh, the Jig Salmon Bone, which is a little bit of a pinkish orange. Um, it comes with a clip blade, a uh, sheep foot blade, and then a small spade blade. Notice the cutout for the spade blade. And um, three and an eighth inch frame on these. Uh, that's this is like I said a zero nine zero versus a zero nine zero R. And this one is the uh, Calypso Blue uh, Deep Canyon Jig Bone. And notice how thick that bone is on there. But otherwise, same blades. Um, as for when were these knives made? And that is a, a good question. Because uh, they are discontinued and I don't know if they're ever going to be coming back. And that brings us to the big questions. Just when were these knives made and, and what kind of handle material can you find them in? And um, I cannot give you a definite answer to either of those questions. I can tell you what I know. And my best guess is these knives started coming out in 2007 and they continued until at least 2012. They might have continued beyond that. And that is based off of, uh, well, this knife, which I own, which came out in 2012. Uh, the earliest one I have is the one in the stag, which is 2008. But I do know that they were around in 2007 because the uh, the case president's knife was a uh, red smooth bone one in 2007. And I have seen numerous references to knives from 2007. As for the handle material, um, I've been able to identify at least 12, but nine of them, well, eight of them, I would consider um, somewhat common. Um, the first is the uh, uh, amber peach seed jig bone handle, which is uh, basically the uh, case flagship of uh, their handle bone. You know, the, uh, the amber peach seed jig is probably their most... Uh, um, common bone and it is also some of the most pretty bones so we have that and then the um, navy blue jig bone for the Boy Scouts of America um, the India sandbar stag so that's one two and three and then the fourth one that I've been able to identify is an autumn barn board jig five was a bone stag um, so bone that was jigged to look like stag. Six was an orange G10. Seven was a Rogers jigged antique bone. And that was also done for the Boy Scouts of America. And then number eight was a uh, case select elk horn. Uh, so elk horn versus, um, India sandbar stag. Um, 
Number nine is an exotic mammoth ivory. I do not know how many of those were made. Number 10 was a Case Brothers uh, caramel bone. I also do not know how many of those were made, but they were put out on the Case Brothers line, so those were also a, a limited run. Number 11 was the Case President's Red Smooth Bone Knife, and this is for the year 2007. And they were um, 350 made, and as far as I know, they were serialized. Number 12 was the Case President's Mother of Pearl Knives, also made in uh, 2007. And a total of four of those were made, also serialized. So one through four in the... Uh, case president's mother of pearl as far as i know um those are the handle materials i know of that doesn't mean there aren't more of them out there and um as far as i know they could have been made after 2012 i just do not have any evidence of that the closest thing to proof of knives being made after that is the fact that the 090 frame which is very similar to the 090R frame, was still being used as late as 2016, which is when this um, 090 um, case Stockman was made. Uh, this is from 2016. So were these made as late as 2016? I don't know. Possibly. So far, the best I can tell is 2012. So 2007 to 2012 in at least 12 different handle materials um, with three of those handle materials being very scarce, that being the mammoth ivory, the red smooth bone, and obviously the mother of pearl, which four are known to exist. Hope that helps. Uh, stick around. I'll do a couple slides. This gives you an idea of how much these knives are going for now. Um, they were sold for anywhere from $80 to $100 uh, when they were first uh, put out. And as you can tell, the uh, Case Junior Scout for the Boy Scouts is really going up there in price. This is actually the one that uh, Hobie on YouTube was showing. This is the one he sold, uh, and it went for $500. Uh, you see the Elkhorn is going at 336 and the uh, the Amber uh, Jig, Amber Peach Seed Jig is going at 217.50, And this is an open bidding. These are not buy it now prices. Uh, and that also does not include the, the shipping charges. So slightly higher than what you're seeing right here. Are they a good investment now? Um, I'm not sure. But if you picked them up when they first came out, well, yeah, you got a, a good bargain at that point. But uh, as you can see, um, I don't know if I'd be paying $336 for the Elkhorn today. I believe I paid $80 for the Amber Peach Seed Jig Bone Knife when I first picked it up. And you can see here, $217. That's a, that's a substantial increase in uh, what? 12 years and I believe the uh, the Boy Scout version from 2010 was going for either a hundred or hundred and ten dollars uh, when it first came out so that's uh, a 500 percent increase in, in value um, is it worth it again that is up to the individual um, Mine is a 2012, so it would probably sell for a little bit less simply because it's not in the 10 dot family.
thanks again for dropping by. Really do appreciate your time here.